Democratic schools are a radical new model of education where children are brought to school and not made to learn anything or really required to do anything at all. Some children can attend a democratic school for as much as a year without completing anything in the way of schoolwork. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't make them learn anything? You let kids sit around for an entire year without making them do anything? Okay, so hold on. How can a school that doesn't make kids do anything be better than a normal school? To explain this, we have to deconstruct some of the philosophies that govern conventional schools and how they are applied to educating students, and contrast them with how democratic schools do it. So, some of the assumptions that normal schools make is that children playing is wasted time. Children will not learn necessary skills and subjects unless forced to. Children need to be separated by age. Children need teachers or other authority figures to police them. And the school does not have the resources or authority to help children that don't learn due to emotional or mental baggage that they bring to the classroom. What this means for the average student attending a normal school is that they are forced to attend school every day regardless of their mental or emotional state sit in long, tedious classes about subjects that they have no interest in at a pace that's often too fast or too slow for them, and pass tests by rote memorization without really internalizing or contextualizing the information they've learned. On top of that, a growing number of elementary and middle schools have eliminated recess so students aren't given any kind of physical or mental break. High schools, which eliminated any kind of recess-like break a long time ago, are now getting rid of physical education classes as well. What this often produces is a child that dreads school and views learning as a chore. Sometimes this compulsory model compounds issues that the child is dealing with, like poverty, and turns them into a disruptive student. Learning is a chore. If I wasn't forced to go to school, I would have never learned anything. Well, that's not necessarily true. Now, let's contrast that with democratic schools. Democratic schools advocates believe that children learn through play, children naturally want to learn, Age mixing helps students both mentally and emotionally. So, by allowing students to pursue subjects that they are interested in, it has the following effects. It fosters intellectual curiosity and a love of learning. Children in democratic schools don't mindlessly memorize facts to regurgitate them onto a test. Since they are pursuing subjects that they love, they retain that information since it pertains to their interests. This reinforcing cycle is why democratic school supporters believe that children naturally want to learn. But even when children are playing, they are gaining much of the knowledge that they would in a formal classroom. For example, while playing a, ch a game, a child needs to learn teamwork if they are playing a game with others, logic and reading to comprehend the rules. Even if they are playing by themselves or simply looking at bugs, they are still learning about anatomy and nature. This freedom to learn when you are ready is why democratic schools also eliminate two problems that plague conventional schools, bullying and disruptive students. Because there are no classrooms, children can end their association with anyone that is bullying them, a luxury they don't have in compulsory schools. In addition, disciplinary actions are conducted by the children themselves democratically in a court-like setting. Because children are settling their problems between themselves, they are more likely to bring attention to their grievances. Democratic schools also rarely have problems with disruptive students. Students usually become problems due to baggage they bring with them into the classroom that keeps them from learning. These students often face a life in a non-stop pressure cooker, where they face stressors at home, often due to poverty, then attend school where they face pressure to learn and pass tests that are often extremely taxing. They are never allowed a break. In democratic schools, these students are given the opportunity to finally unpack their mental baggage. Once they've unpacked their baggage, they often go on to perform and learn as well as their peers. Coming back to those students that I mentioned earlier that attended democratic schools for a whole year without doing anything, it turns out the majority of these students, once given the chance to decompress their mental baggage, went on to become excellent students. Finally, democratic schools bolster accelerated learning through age mixing in what's known as zone of proximal development. Elementary students all the way up to teens are often allowed to associate with each other in democratic schools. This accelerates younger students' learning as they will often be mentored by older students. For example, younger children at democratic schools often learn more complicated card games from older students that they wouldn't have been able to learn on their own. This lays the groundwork for that younger student to develop the confidence and logical skills to explore more complex subjects than they would have otherwise been able to learn without an older mentor. This benefits older children too, since it fosters nurturing skills and allows teenagers to appreciate and reflect on their own maturity and growth. All these philosophies that govern democratic schools foster intellectual curiosity, critical thinking, creativity, and improvisation. All vital skills needed to thrive in today's modern workplace where the best and most secure jobs all require these skills. 
This all sounds good, but I don't know. It's obvious that our current school system is failing our students. Some of this is due to underfunding and factors outside of the control of the school, like the growing poverty rate in this country. But the success of the democratic school model shows that the very ideas behind our compulsory school system, like kids won't learn if you don't make them, kids must be forced to learn certain subjects that prepare them for the workplace, and the time kids spend playing is counterproductive to learning, is also another root cause to their failure to effectively educate children.